This is a demonstration of using Mentor Embedded Sorcery Code Bench Virtual Edition to debug a Linux based system on a virtual prototype. The virtual prototype was built with Mentor Graphics Vista Architect. The processor in the design is a Cortex A9. There's some memory, some peripherals, an LCD console, and a Super FIFO device. The application will send messages into the Super FIFO, then retrieve them and verify that the messages were properly transferred. The FIFO only holds 16 bytes though, so longer messages must be broken into fragments and then reassembled. This is the Sorcery Codebench IDE. The workspace includes two projects. One project is the Super FIFO demo application. The second project contains the driver modules. This is the Super FIFO driver module. The outline view on the right side of the screen shows the contents of the driver module. The functions of interest are the Super FIFO write function which puts messages into the FIFO and the Super FIFO read function which reads messages back out of the FIFO. Demo main.cpp contains the main entry point to the application. Demo sfifo.cpp contains the actual worker functions. Again, the outline view shows the contents of the module, and the main code is located in the sfifo demo function. The sfifo demo function performs a test of the Super FIFO device by sending messages into the FIFO, reading them back, and verifying their contents. The main loop of the function starts with a message size of 1, doubles the message size on each pass through the loop until the maximum size is reached. So now let's start debugging this. Before we can start debugging though, we need to launch the virtual prototype. So I'll open the virtual prototype configurations, choose the debug option, and this contains all the parameters for running the virtual prototype. This begins the virtual prototype simulation and then it waits for a debug connection. Now let's start the debugger. I'll choose a debug configurations menu, choose the driver debug option, which is configured to debug Linux and the drivers, click on the debugger. When I do that, Linux begins booting up in the console. Once Linux is booted, I'll log on as root and then I'll load the driver module into Linux. Note that I can access the file system on my host computer through the mount directory. And now the driver module is loaded at a base address of 7F004000. The next step is to tell the debugger where the module was loaded. To do this, I need to pause execution for a moment, select the GDB console, and source a script file that specifies the address. Now let's start debugging the application. Again, I'll pick the Debug Configurations menu, and this time choose Demo Debug. This will download the demo application onto the virtual prototype and run up to the entry point of main. Now we can step over the init function and some messages, step over the demo application. When I look at the variables view, Notice that test error returned 10, so 10 errors were detected in the sfifo demo. So let's stop this program and restart it so that we can investigate the nature of the problem. So I'll debug the application again, step over the init function, this time step into the sfifo demo function, and let's go down to the two places where it might report an error. One here, and one here. The first one says if the number of bytes written doesn't equal the number of bytes read, that's an error. Or if the contents of the receive message and the send message are different, that's an error. I'll also set a breakpoint on the else statement so that I can monitor the progress, each pass through the loop, whether or not we have any errors. So now we'll run, and you see first we have a one byte message. W was sent, W was received, it's all good. Run again, we have a two byte message that matches. Four bytes match, eight bytes match, 
16 bytes match. Oh, we have a problem here. When byte count is 32, it sent 32 bytes, but received only 16 bytes. And you can see the difference in the message length. Let's set a breakpoint on the driver read and write functions to see what's going on here. I'll set a breakpoint at the return of the read function and at the return of the write function. Run the application again. So here I'm at the end of the write function. I can see it is returning the length, the message length, which is 64, as it should be. And when I look at the Super FIFO registers, I notice the count is only 16. Only 16 bytes were written to the FIFO, yet we're returning 64. So the, the issue is, here you see we're, we're counting how many bytes got put in, in the count variable, but we're returning the length variable. That was the number of bytes requested. But the Super FIFO is only 16 bytes deep, so it can only take 16 bytes at a time. The bug is that we're returning the message size requested instead of the message size actually stored in the FIFO. When I resume execution again, and it calls the read function, this time we're returning count. That's the number of bytes actually read from the Super FIFO, and we got 16, because of course there were only 16 bytes there in the first place. And when I run again, my application code checks the number sent compared to the number received, and that's why we have an error. The application code includes a loop to break up a packet into fragments based on the size of the FIFO, but the logic of the loop is defeated by returning the wrong count on the right call. It thinks it sent the entire message when in fact it only sent the first 16 bytes. But now let's stop the debugger of the application, and we'll stop the debugger for the driver and go fix our bug. The bug in the driver module was in the write function. Here, it should be returning count actually saved in the FIFO instead of the count requested. Rebuild the driver module, and now we'll make sure that everything's finally okay. Just as before, I'll start by launching the virtual prototype simulation, and when the debugger connection is ready, I'll start debugging the updated driver. Now we see Linux booting up. Then I'll log on as root and load the updated driver. Next, I'll tell the debugger where the module was loaded. And then start debugging my application again. Now I still have the breakpoint set from before, but we think we fixed the driver, so I'll disable the driver breakpoints and leave the application breakpoints in place so that we can monitor the execution of this. So we had already run through the first pass, and we're on to the second pass, and the two byte message worked, and the four byte message worked, and the eight byte message worked, and the 16 byte message worked. We've sent the 32 bytes, and again only received 16 bytes. Let's walk through this application and see what's going on with this. This loop is responsible for breaking up the message into fragments the size of the FIFO. So we'll step through this loop now, and we see the write bytes is 16, so it only sent 16 bytes, even though the byte count of the message is 64, because we fixed the driver bug, we know it only sent one fragment, and the received bytes are 16 as well. So it sent 16 bytes, it received 16 bytes, the whole message is 64 bytes long, but we've only sent 16 so far. So that looks good so far. When we send the second fragment, now interesting, we see again only 16 bytes are received. It should have added the second 16 bytes to the first 16 bytes. Now when we step the receive function again, we see the third fragment overwrote the buffer as well. So now we have a different problem. We're correctly fragmenting the message, but each receive fragment is overriding the same part of the buffer. 
So let's look at the loop again. And here, when we call the write function, we're passing in the pointer to the buffer plus the count already sent so far. But on the receive side, we're only passing the pointer to the receive buffer. That's why we keep overriding the same part of the buffer with each fragment. So let's terminate the application debugger and fix this application bug. Here we need to offset the receive buffer pointer by the received count so far, just like we do with the send buffer. So I'll save that change, rebuild my demo application. Now since I only aborted the debugger of the application, the virtual prototype simulator is still running and Linux is still running, so we can just debug the application again. So now we'll run through the application code. Now we got a one byte message worked, two bytes worked, four bytes, eight bytes, 16 bytes, even 32 bytes worked, and 64 bytes. So now we know we fixed the receive buffer management bug that we had before. Let's disable all these breakpoints and just run to the return from this function back up to main. Test error is zero, so we completely tested the FIFO up to the maximum message size, and all of our problems have been resolved. We can use Sorcery Analyzer to visualize the performance of the system. First, we'll open the Sorcery Analyzer perspective, and then we'll create a Sorcery Analyzer project to hold the results. After the Sorcery Analyzer project is created, we'll run the Virtual Prototype and Analyzer mode. This will capture the results of the hardware analysis. After Linux is booted, we'll create a new Sorcery Analyzer session to capture the results of this analysis run. We can choose from a number of templates. In this case, I'll choose to analyze LTTNG trace data as well as the hardware analysis coming from the virtual prototype. This creates a timeline showing different kinds of information that we might be interested in. There's no data yet. To capture the data, I need to run a profile configuration. This will download the application and run it while capturing Linux trace data and hardware analysis data. Once the analysis run is complete, the trace data is imported into the Sorcery Analyzer and displayed in several ways to show the different information we're interested in. The CPU state graph shows what's happening in the CPU. The function call graph shows what functions are being called. Let's zoom in on the function activity in our application. The stack depth graph shows how many functions have been called since the entry point of the application. The VP power graph shows how much power is being consumed. The red line shows the average power over the sampling interval, in this case 100 microseconds. And by reducing the sampling rate, we can see a little more fidelity in the analysis graph. The yellow line shows the maximum power used, and the green graph shows the minimum power used. The cache hit miss ratio shows how often the caches are hitting and missing. This gives you in depth analysis capabilities into the operation of your application. The order of the displays can be changed to make it easier to see what's going on. Here I'll move the power graph higher up so that I can conveniently see it next to the function calls. And now when I zoom in further, I can correlate the power being used to the functions which are being called. This lets me determine the impact of the software has on the overall power consumption of the system. By zooming in further, we can drill down into particularly interesting times during the analysis. And we can drop cursors down so that we can better see what exactly is going on. And by selecting a particular waveform, we can skip to the next change in the waveform. Here's what we call S5O read. Then it calls memsat, returns to S5O read, calls the actual read function, returns back to S5O read, and then returns back to the demo loop. If we put a second cursor down, 
we can go back and look at how much time did the entire S FIFO read function take, including calls to lower level subroutines. Sorcery Analyzer includes a number of built-in analysis agents to show different information about your system. For instance, the Function Call Statistics agent will bring up a table showing how much time was spent in each individual function and each function including the children that it calls. You can also create your own custom agents. This lets you create application-specific analysis for your particular domain. This shows how the Mentor Embedded Sorcery Codebench Virtual Edition can be used to debug both Linux applications and Linux drivers at the same time on a virtual prototype.